This is episode 46 of a series where we examine the cut content, design, and development of Fallout New Vegas. FNV has a massive arsenal of well over 200 weapons, and by my count, that's more than Fault 1, 2, Tactics 3, or 4. Despite that impressive feat, a surprising number of weapons never made it into the final game. This is FNV's Cut Weapons. The Laser RCW is an automatic laser weapon based off the Thompson submachine gun. There is no unique variant of the Laser RCW, but there is an unused Vault Boy icon for one. The top of the barrel is slightly different, and the electron charge pack at the center of the drum magazine is larger. From a sound file, it seems it was called the Laser PDW and fired a continuous blast of lasers. Modders Hopper and Roy Batty did a fantastic job recreating the PDW, and if you're interested in checking it out, there's a link to their mod below. Like many aspects of FNV, the idea of a laser-based Thompson weapon originated in Van Buren, Black Isles cancelled Fault 3, and was then called the Laser Array Gun. There's an unused weapon called Rorschach Drawing, and it's identical to one of the Rorschach slides used during character creation. It deals zero damage, and floats over the player's fist when equipped, as it was only meant to be used by Doc Mitchell in a cut sequence. In the final game, the inkblots appear and disappear magically, but Doc Mitchell has cut animations he was meant to use during the test. He would have picked one up, showed it to the player before setting it down, and repeating the cycle. This would have been a great touch, but unfortunately these animations are super glitchy, which is probably why they still haven't been restored to this day. While the Mantis Gauntlet is used in the final game, there are cut schematics for crafting it. It's unknown why they were cut, but it would have made crafting a bit more viable for melee players. In the original release, the Mantis Gauntlet was much more powerful as it bypassed the damage threshold of its targets, but this was later removed by a patch. The Layer, or Laser Assisted Electrical Rifle, is one of my favorite weapons from Old World Blues. However, it was originally intended to appear in the core game. Its Vault Boy icon can still be found, and you can see its concept art in the Collector's Edition guide. There's a repair form for a cut weapon called NVGP Machine Gun, which stood for General Purpose Machine Gun. Josh Sawyer revealed more about the weapon on Tumblr. The GP Machine Gun was going to be a 308 MG that I later decided was unnecessary in the base game. I think my initial idea was to base it on the M60. In the end, the LMG is an aesthetic blend of the M60 and M249 saw. There's an unused weapon called Nellis Artillery. It uses the Fat Man model and fires an equally unused ammo type, Nellis Artillery shells. Initially, I figured it was used for testing the iconic bombardment scene outside Nellis. However, it's marked as playable and has all of its art assets, suggesting it might have been intended for the player. It's possible it was going to be a unique fat man that was awarded to the player for helping the boomers. It still uses the equip type big guns, which means it was cut very early in development. In the script that governs Misfortune's weapon, there's references to two cut weapons, the Light Rail Cannon and Heavy Rail Cannon, but beyond this, nothing remains from either. 
There was a cut weapon in Van Buren called the Artemis Railgun. It still remains in the tech demo and fired an ammo type that has yet to be used in any Fallout game, 15mm energy cells. It isn't functional, but it gives us the only look at how the rail cannon might have appeared in New Vegas. Weapons, armor, and items in Van Buren had a tech level to represent how complicated they were, and railguns were some of the most complex in the game, alongside power armor and other high-tech gadgets. This suggests the rail cannons might have been some of the most powerful weapons in FNV. It's unknown if they had too much overlap with the Gauss rifle, or if there simply wasn't time to include them. The Multiplast Rifle is a powerful three-barreled plasma rifle, but the weapon found in New Vegas is actually the unique variant. Luckily for us, the cut normal version still remains in the game files. It only has two barrels and would have only fired two shots per trigger pull, limiting its effectiveness. However, it also would have been more common and likely had lower skill requirements. The concept art also has some interesting differences compared to the final version. The two-barrel version was intended to have green-tinted barrels, while the tri-barrel version had yellow tint rather than the green that was eventually used. It also has additional wires and a different grip. There are two cut versions of the Plasma Rifle, Plasma Rifle Weak, and Plasma Rifle Always Crit. The weak version uses the HV prefix, revealing it would have appeared inside the Brotherhood of Steel bunker at Hidden Valley. It deals significantly less damage than the regular plasma rifle, 3 compared to 32. The regular plasma rifle would later be buffed by a patch, but the weak version actually dealt higher critical damage in the original release. It also had no strength or skill requirements, better range, and used one ammo per shot instead of two. Due to these qualities, it could actually be sold for more. It seems this weak version could have been useful for low-level, high-luck character builds. Plasma Rifle Always Crit was used for debugging, as it fires 5 rounds and each shot always results in a critical, killing the vast majority of enemies in a single attack. There are several additional debug weapons that were used during development, like the Mega Debug Pistol, the Disintegrator, and the Faderator. The Faderator is the most interesting debug weapon and was created by tech producer Jason Fader. This Gauss Rifle variant regenerates ammo, fires multiple rounds, and essentially fires as fast as you can pull the trigger. It can only be found in a test cell called Mentat's Test Level, which still has some NPCs, creatures, and weapons. The cell name Mentats is likely a reference to Team Mentats. During FNV's development, Obsidian staff was broken up into five sub-teams, each focused on different milestones. The teams were named after an item in the Fault universe, Team Psycho, Nuka, Fancy, Buffout, and Mentats. The Big Boomer is a unique, sawed-off shotgun, and it has an unused texture. It's very similar to the weapon model from Fallout 3, except for some minor changes, and is just an early iteration of the weapon. There's an unused reference to a cut weapon, the Heavy Riveter. Riveters were set to appear as low-level big guns in Van Buren. Their ammo still exists in the tech demo and are called small and heavy rivets. Unfortunately, the actual weapon is missing in both the tech demo and New Vegas. As far as I'm aware, no concept art has ever been released for the Riveter either. Presumably it functioned like Fallout 3's railway rifle, but its appearance is a total mystery. Ulysses, the antagonist of Lonesome Road, was once a companion in the core game. Even though he was cut, his weapon still remains in the base game and was called the Eagle Flagpole. 
This weapon was eventually recycled as his unique weapon in FNV's final DLC and was renamed Old Glory. There's a cut grenade called Stun Grenade. Stun Grenades were meant to deal fatigue damage and knock NPCs unconscious. They emit a blinding light, and the closer the player is to the explosion, the more powerful the effect. They deal a small amount of damage, and if an NPC is killed by one, they're strangely dismembered. It seems there wasn't enough time to get it working properly for the core game. Stun Grenades would later be completed and renamed as Flashbangs in Lonesome Road. There is an early, unused version of the Legion Slave backpack called Slave's Burden. It's technically a weapon, but was never meant to be used in combat, and was simply a workaround for the asset that was eventually cut. The Slave's backpack that appears in the final game is equipped as armor instead of a weapon. During the quest Classic Inspiration, the player takes photos around the wasteland for Michelangelo using the Kodak R9000 camera. There's an unused early version of the R9000 that was used for testing the quest. Why is it in this video? Well, the cut camera, as well as the one used in the quest, are technically guns, they just deal no damage. Impact from the shot can still be seen when taking pictures of the water, or you can do this. What the fuck are you doing? My brother died at the Battle of Hoover Dam. You're desecrating a war memorial. Eddie has a cut melee attack called Stun Baton. It seems like this would fatigue enemies and knock them out, but it's set up to cause the flamer's burning effect. It also had an upgraded form, but unfortunately the idea was scrapped. While not cut, the Zap Glove and the Displacer Glove were meant to use energy cells as ammo. Likewise, the Ballistic Fist was intended to use shotgun shells. Josh Sawyer revealed why this idea was cut. I intended for several of the unarmed weapons to use ammo, but we encountered some problems with implementing it. I would have liked to continue with it because I think ammo use slash reloading could have helped distinguish those weapons in more interesting ways. More than distinguishing unarmed weapons, it also would have added an element of resource management, something that's missing from melee and unarmed builds. In the final game, the Ballistic Fist uses the Power Fist Vault Boy icon, but there is an unused icon that was made specifically for the weapon. It was likely cut by mistake. In Honest Hearts, there is an unused icon for a cut weapon called Bug Spray. It depicts the Vault Boy with an aerosol can and a lighter. There is no other remnant of the weapon, but it was likely intended to function like the Flamer, perhaps attacking in a wider arc but a more limited range. The X-13 Field Disruptor Pistol is a cut laser pistol that deals twice the damage of the normal version. It uses the laser pistol model, fires microfusion breeders, and on critical hits, it had the same effect as the Displacer Glove. When shot, it has the same visual effect as the Sonic Emitter. It seems this was used to test the Sonic Emitter's force field disrupting effect. The Scorpion and Spider Rifles are two cut weapons from the Old World Blues DLC, and are in my opinion, the most interesting cut weapons in all of FNV. During my interview with lead level designer Charlie Staples, he revealed why they were cut. For the Old World Blues DLC, we were trying to get in a weapon that acted like a grenade launcher, but instead of grenades, it launched a special grenade that spawned robo-scorpions to fight your enemies. We got this functional, but there was enough bugs with it and intermittent problems with the AI that we didn't have time to fix, so we cut this. I wish we could have gotten that working because I think it would have been really fun for players and would have fit in well with that DLC. The texture for the Scorpion Rifle was later recycled for the Great Bear Grenade Rifle, a unique weapon in Lonesome Road. There's another cut weapon from Old World Blues called Meat Mine. 
During the quest, A Brain's Best Friend, the player kills Dr. Boris's dog, Gabe, and the meat mine likely would have been the easiest method to complete the objective. Gabe still has an AI package that leads him to any nearby meat mines. Perhaps they could have been used against other hostile cyber dogs found throughout the DLC as well. In Dead Money, there's a cut weapon called Starlet Hand Wraps. It uses the boxing tape model and has a unique effect called Starlet's Fury, which creates an electrical effect and has a chance to knock down the target. Boxing tape is designed around dealing fatigue, but this weapon had no fatigue effect. I don't think it was ever intended to be used by the player, as it isn't marked as playable. Further, it's used by the Vera Keys hologram that spawns during your first trip to the Sierra Madre lobby. The hologram is disabled not long after appearing, but it's set to use the Ghost People melee style. The player can activate a different hologram in the lobby that fights off the ghost people that later spawn there. Perhaps the hologram once fought them using Starlet hand wraps, rather than the hologram beam used in the final game. Maybe this hologram was even going to be a danger to the player, but there's no evidence to support that theory. Junk is my business. Several weapons from Fallout 3 can be found in FNV's game files. The rocket launcher from Fallout 3 works by firing random junk as ammunition and is one of my favorite weapons in the series. In unpatched versions of New Vegas, you can actually find the schematics to craft the rocket launcher inside Nellis Air Force Base. The weapon doesn't actually exist though, so even if you have an unpatched game and find the schematics, it's impossible to craft. The Deathclaw Gauntlet still remains in the core game files. As a result of this being cut, the Deathclaw hand item became useless outside of being sold. It would later appear as the unique weapon Fist of Rar in the Lonesome Road DLC or Fist of the North Rar if you have the Wild Wasteland trait. The faction Can Be Mezzed with Mesmatron was updated with New Vegas NPCs, indicating that player-initiated slavery may have been planned at some point. The Mesmatron itself can also be found in the game files, but it's unknown if the weapon would have appeared, or if only the faction would be used and slavery would be triggered in another way. In Freeside, you can access Mick's hidden armory by passing a speech check. Inside this area, there are several unattainable weapons from Fall 3. These include the Infiltrator, the Railway Rifle, the Tri-Beam Laser Rifle, and Chinese Pistol. These are static models and not actual weapons though. While the Tri-Beam Rifle was later added in the Gunrunners DLC, the Infiltrator and Railway Rifle were probably never going to appear and are simply props. However, the Chinese Pistol is a different story. In New Vegas, there are two different shooting sounds for many weapons. A normal shooting sound, and a distant shooting sound. As the distance between you and the fired gun increases, the normal sound fades and the distant sound becomes louder. The Chinese pistol has distant sound files, something that didn't exist in Fault 3, revealing it was definitely considered. I suspect the Chinese pistol just had too much overlap with the 9mm and 22 pistol. Other unused weapons can be found in the game files, like the Double Barrel Shotgun, Dark Gun, 32 Pistol, Chinese Officer Sword, etc. These are likely just leftover Fault 3 resources, rather than weapons that were actually going to appear. Finally, let's talk about cut weapon mods and ammo. The Service Rifle was meant to have a reflex sight, Intriguingly, it also has a texture of a bayonet attachment, suggesting that the service rifle and other weapons were going to have melee attacks at one point. Josh Sawyer revealed why this was cut. 
It didn't work, and it would have taken a decent amount of programming to get it to work. The 10mm pistol has an unused heavy frame mod. The 44 revolver also has a heavy frame mod, which increases its condition by 50%, and it likely would have provided the same effect for the 10mm. The 45 pistol from Honest Hearts was meant to have an improved sights mod, but instead, it eventually became a part of the base weapon. When asked if the original sights were like the sights found in the unique version, Josh Sawyer replied, No, it had conventional sights. The night sights were made part of the base version because the zoom modification that went along with the improved sights caused a bug. I figured it would be more useful to have the night sights be the default rather than cut them. Gutter snipe and trench sights are typically used to give weapons a lower profile for concealed carry. The hunting rifle has a cut mod called Stripper Clip. There's no assets for it, but stripper clips are speed loaders and it likely increased the rifle's reload speed. The Marksman Carbine has a cut extended magazine mod that would have increased its magazine capacity. In the final game, it has no mods unfortunately. The Ripper has a texture for a silent motor mod, which presumably made it into a stealth weapon. I'm not sure the idea could work in the engine, but even if it could, it likely required an unreasonable amount of time to get working. The Trail Carbine only has a single mod, but it has two cut mods, a custom action, and a laminate stock, which would have increased the weapon's durability and decreased its carry weight. There's a reference to a white phosphorus 25mm grenade. This probably applied a burning effect across a large area. There's an unused icon for 3030 soft rounds, but it was cut as it had too much overlap with the existing 308 round. Speaking of which, there's a cut variant of 308 rounds that reduced the target's DT. There's also a beanbag shotgun shell that had reduced spread compared to the common version. The H&H &H Tools nail gun had a cut flechette ammo type. The way they're set up, they're objectively worse than the normal ammo though. Finally, there's one last cut ammo type, pure water. It's marked as playable, so perhaps it was ammo for a water gun that only dealt damage to robots, or maybe it was a useless joke weapon, but it's difficult to say. While many of these cut weapons were interesting and would have improved FNV, it already introduced a vast selection of distinct, awesome weapons that remain some of the best the series has to offer. As always, thanks for watching.